Hey, I'm John Grease III, founder of Garage Mike Media, and you guys may have checked out Jason Campbell's home gym tour, and now we're here in his warehouse. So this is a unique opportunity to take a look at what goes into making the home gym equipment that you use in your home gyms. Jason, first of all, thanks for having us in here. You've got a ton of stuff around here. We're looking around your warehouse a little bit. There's so much that people don't know about circular strength. You guys actually set up home gyms for people, right? That's right. That's, uh, that's one of our big businesses and kind of how we got into this. Uh, a lot of people don't know the equipment as well or what's available or the most efficient way. And we've helped a lot of people over the years. So that's, that's one of the services we offer. Um, okay. We're working on one right now. It's really nice new construction, uh, which is always fun to have a clean slate to kind of yeah, go yeah, into. Yeah. Uh, but we also do retrofits uh, okay. and, and renovations and things like that. Um, we have a partner that is a, a contractor and uh, we can do build outs up to $150,000. So. so when you say it's new construction, they're building the home gym. I'm sorry, they're building the home. That shows you where my focus is. <laughs> so they're building the home and they've got a designated space for the home gym. And they said, okay, look, look at the, the blueprints. This is the space you'll have. It's reasonably well squared off. Right. And so you don't have any like weird stuff, sloping floors or anything like that to deal with. So I, I actually spent five years as a product manager in commercial construction. So I have a strong construction background. I can read blueprints. You'll love this. This home gym that we're working on right now is actually under a guest house. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's a large So is it ground house. level? So there's a two car garage and a 900 square foot gym. And above that is a home theater and a two bedroom apartment okay. uh, for this particular house. Uh, the roll-up door goes out to the sport court and the pool. Uh, nice. And nice. that's all behind the uh, the actual house that's already there. Wow. So it's new construction and a renovation kind of Okay, okay. And then when you got the retrofit, that's basically what most of us do for home gyms. It's like, hey, there's a room in the house. Hey, I want to put a gym in here. And you guys just go in there. And you, you get, do you start with measurements for like uh, putting on mats and things like that? Or do you start with measurements for the space, figure out what kinds of equipment you want to put in there, what kind of footprint the equipment so will have. The, the first thing we do is sit down with the customer and because I have a personal training background, we go, how do you train? What are your goals? What do you want to use this for? Okay. And then we start saying, okay, what are our must have equipment? Okay. And then we start talking, okay, well, we're already at this in budget. If we include all these things, what is your budget? Let's get realistic. Okay. And okay. then we start tailoring it down to what they actually want. And then they're not piecing it together like most of us do. They're buying <laughs> This stuff pretty much, That's right. they're expecting a home gym when you're done. Well, and what does everybody forget when they first go to build out their home gym? Flooring. And it can be a massive expense. And in this case, 900 square foot worth of play flooring, we're talking about $13,000. That's okay. a big portion of a budget. I mean, so that's more than most people's entire oh, budget, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So um, on this one, we were fortunate enough, we were able to get play flooring. So they're coming out actually on the 30th in five days. We've been okay. waiting for this for a long time. Um, to come out and install one of their premium floor systems. Okay. Um, we had the contractors go ahead and, and do our slam ball wall. Uh, so that's kind of in place, you know, one inch plywood on the wall. It's all painted and everything. Okay. Uh, the HVAC, the big ass fan, everything is kind of done by the contractors at that point. So that's really nice. So there's a, there's a lot to do still when we go in, but we try to let all the construction based things be done by subcontractors if we can, because we want them to guarantee their work and we want it to be the highest quality possible. Then we get to come in and just set pallets of equipment up and build racks and, and their custom deadlift platform and their custom you know power rack platform okay. all that stuff goes in uh you know th this particular building getting a tank so that goes on the wall you know a torque tank yeah, yeah. the m1 it hangs on the wall um they've got uh deadlift platform power rack store two storage racks because they have one dedicated for dumbbells um rogue donkey uh standalone squat max um you know all all the, all the things gotcha yeah. Now, the other thing about that is that through the process of you setting up other people's home gyms, mm -hmm. as well as being a home gym owner yourself, because you can set something up and then if you've never used it in that environment, let's say you worked out in a public gym, you wouldn't see some of the problems that we have to deal with as home gym owners. So 100%. because you're a home gym owner, you're using this stuff and you started noticing little, uh, let's call it gaps in the market. Mm -hmm. It's not that stuff wasn't there. It's like, oh, well, this might be a tweak I can do you used to do better. So like this, you said that this is part of your rogue rack, right? Well, it's not, obviously it's not your rogue rack. It was part of my rogue rack. This was, a, this this was, was an was. actual cross member from the So rack. tell me why this is in here. So right now we use this to fit up every single UPS unit that we put out. So our flagship products is the universal pulley system. Okay. Um, it needed to be able to fit on a three by three cross member with either two inch or 500 millimeter spacing. Okay. Depending on if you have a Chinese rack, or if you have an American-made rack, they use you know 
standard versus universal okay. uh, fitment. So we actually have a slot in, in our product that allows you uh, to use that on either type of spacing. So that's kind of our our signature thing so that it will fit either spacing. But we use this as a fitment on every single one, uh, making good. sure that it's going to fit the rack that you're going to put it on. That is a big deal because it is so annoying to buy something. You've been on the phone, you've gone through measurements, and you, they say, oh yeah, it'll work. It gets to your house, they're not there, and then you try to put this thing on, and now you're wiggling it, fixing it, making phone calls, they don't answer the phone. You're sending emails, it's just so frustrating. So you guys go through that process right here in your warehouse or in your shop before you ever send it out. Every single time, and, and we have had some units that slip through QC, you know, uh, bending metal is a pretty, you know, it's not a perfect thing. Something goes out to a customer, they're not happy. Do they send it back to you? That's correct. So we, we've done about 20 returns. Uh, 20 out of the 380 something that we've shipped out or whatever so far have had to come back in house. Uh, we send them a return unit. They put it back in the box that we send in because we do have custom boxes for all our stuff. So you right. just take the shell, replace the parts, send us the old unit back. Gotcha. Getting it just right is really important. So we have a heavy QC so that we can you know, do our units with issues and put those to the side and make sure that we get you something that's usable every time. So. You guys do most of your welding here in-house in this very Yes. Right here? Okay. Yeah. So uh, we, we were in a much smaller warehouse. We've grown pretty quickly, so we were doing it out of house, but now we've got a nice big fab table and a new welder and everything. So we're, uh, we're pretty self-sufficient here. Um, the, the steel gets cut. Um, these all get laser cut, okay. which is a big million dollar machine. But um, it does all the laser cutting and tapping. Like this is a drop-in safety in particular. So there's going to be UHMW that gets mounted on this. Okay. Um, also inside, you know, the cups where it, where it fits into the uprights. So uh, that all gets laser done. These are cut on a big flat laser machine. It's like a two million dollar 10K okay. laser, uh, and then formed on an electric press brake. And so, and then, then all those parts come in house, and we weld and assemble everything here in house. How has the steel situation been for you guys? Because I mean, steel was already an issue. Then you started having a tariff war with China. That caused steel prices to go up some more. Then you had a pandemic where everybody is trying to get all the steel they can because the demand for products, not just home gym products, but the demand for products went up. And now that happened all while you are trying to build a business. How are you guys able to survive, especially using basically American source products? Um. You know, it's, it's been tough. When, when we set out to make this gun, my dad's been building aircraft for 40 something years. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm an army vet. I believe in American manufacturing. I, I believe in the quality. I believe in putting my hands on everything that we make. Yeah. And I do, I all the way to boxing them up. I mean, I'm the guy that tapes with the boxes. Nice, know? okay. Um, we eat and crow. Yeah. I don't have another word for it. Uh, we haven't done any price raises uh, except on the UPS load. We've gone $25 on that. That's all. That's it. Okay. Which was not much. We right. were really hurting on the load. Okay. Uh, I mean, the profit margin was like below where we could even sustain ourselves as a company. Um, so we did. We, we were forced to. Um, okay. I'm not in this for the money. Okay. Uh, I, I'm a personal trainer. I have a good practice. I mean, you know, and I got in this because people wanted the, the pulley system and I wanted to learn a new trade. It's something I really enjoy. And I like getting to meet people and I like getting to see them smile and use my product and get gains from it. And that, that is fulfilling to me. Um, so, so far, we've just taken the lumps on the head um, and, and it's been tough. We've gone through three price raises without uh, raising the price I'll pass on, that on, to the, on the UPS high okay. yet. Um, and I'm just hoping it doesn't raise again. Okay. Uh, it, it makes it difficult. But now that we are to the point where we are, we bootstrapped this entire thing. Um, I just recently closed a funding deal last week uh, with a new partner who's right. going to be taking on a small portion of the company. And we're really blessed to have that. So now I can buy larger quantities right. and, and really make a better product overall. Nice. I can get the steel manufactured to focus on my products a little bit more when I'm buying 500 at a time. So we literally did just purchase 500 UPS units and uh, they were expecting to be delivered next week. Okay. So all those parts will come here and then we'll start welding those up. Those will go to Powder Coat, which is about an hour south of here in Lewisburg. Okay. Uh, our partner Ironcraft, the Powder Coat's all our stuff. And uh, then they'll get back here for assembly and uh, they'll start rolling out the door. So, okay. Yeah. And with all that, you, you mentioned you know, that now you've got a, a partner. But even before that, you had some cool new ideas that you, you were telling me about. Um, I just was over at your home gym. If you guys did not get to see his home gym tour, you can go ahead and you check it out by going right there. 
and you'll be able to check out the tour of his home gym showing all the stuff that he plays with in his own home gym. <laughs> you showed me like an awesome storage solution. How did you come up with the storage solution idea? I, I got frustrated with other people's solutions. And I okay. think they may have worked well in other settings, like yeah. in the CrossFit gym, but like I ended up manipulating some of their shells to do what I wanted to do and it still wasn't deep enough. So it's like, how do we, it's all a solution for me. Like, right. how do we make this better? How do we make it more usable? And so to do that, you have to beef it up a little bit. We wanted to make sure the shells were really deep so they could hold two kettlebells deep, competition style, because right. that's what I like. And it just turns out there were a lot of the people that were looking for that solution. Um, so making that come to life was was fulfilling for me, but also you know obviously it was it was a solution for other people. And it was, that was just a blessing from God. You know? yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. Hey, so yeah, that works for uh, me. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, that that's what we just try to continue to do. You know, I, I am my customer, um, and, and so that makes it really easy for me, and it makes me easy to interact with because I'm just a normal guy. You know, uh, I, I'm not a big manufacturer. Um, I've got one guy that works in this warehouse with me, a young man named Tristan. He puts a lot of love in every one he assembles, and he is a maniac at him, dude. He can, nice. he can assemble real good now. So, wow. yeah. But he, he's not even a, a lifter. You know, he got in this, just needed a summer job, and I put him to work, and now he's, he's working out twice a week. You know, like, this is life changing stuff. That's you know? awesome. So, well, you guys have a ton of exciting new things coming. So, if somebody wants to be able to grab a hold of the, the new products you have coming, as well as purchase what you already have in stock. How can they order and how can they follow you if they want to check out what you've been doing, including seeing that home gym setup that you're doing on Instagram? So uh, you can follow us at Surplus Strength on Instagram. We have a Facebook page that is mildly used. We're really active on Instagram. Uh, you can go to surplusstrength.com and purchase all our products. Uh, we will be starting a pre-sale on the Arc Series modular storage system, which you can see in the home gym preview. Uh, as you can see here, this is a, a drop-in safety, so we are releasing the ARC Series Power Racks soon, okay. uh, and, and you'll be able to see those. Again, we're waiting on parts because wait times are ridiculous right now, but we're, we're almost finished with, with this set of these, and we'll have seven of these that we'll be able to showcase, and those will be ready for pre-sale hopefully by November. Okay. Yeah. You want to create a promo code? Tristan is a lifter now? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, look out. We're going to try and do something for Black Friday. I don't know if it'll be big. You know, I'm still 150 back orders behind. You yeah, know, we've been overwhelmed with, with business. We're so grateful. Nice. Um, and, and so one, once we get backed out of that, we'll have something else. We're about to drop some new t-shirts. Be on the lookout for that. We got some swag on the website too, some cool stuff. And uh, just, we like being involved in the community. Like we like getting in and bantering back and forth with people. So, you know, shoot us a message. If you got any questions about anything, uh, hit me up on Instagram or send us an email. I'm Jason at Surplus Strength. I answer all the emails. We don't have anybody else that does it. So uh, if you want to talk to me, that's, that's how you get in touch.